Hello friends, welcome back to Toy Cafe. I am your host, and in this video we're going to do something a little bit different. What had happened is I had bought a box from the dollar store, and I thought, why don't I try to make this beautiful if I'm going to use it? So this is what I came up with, and you can let me know if you think it's beautiful as well. I think it came out very nice. And I will show you how I did it and what I did, and you can let me know what you think of it, and... Give me any suggestions if you have some. This is the box as it came from the dollar store. It's made out of plywood and it's meant to come apart into two pieces. And as you can see, it is very rough. There are splinters sticking out everywhere. It's not square. And one of the sides is even curved pretty severely. Yeah, so let's see what we can do to turn this from very plain or ugly into something beautiful yeah you see how crooked that uh, side is so when a box comes apart it usually has a lip to help uh, keep the sides aligned but i'm going to use hinges and that's just going to get into the way so we'll take that out wasn't glued in very well so that helped me out and to help make this box beautiful i'm going to cover it in a cherry veneer and this is some cherry i've had around for a while uh, as cherry is exposed to ultraviolet light, it actually takes on a darker color. So this one has been out for a little while, give us a nice dark color. It's very pretty. And uh, it'll just keep getting prettier the longer it's around. So I've traced the outside of the box, and I'm just cutting out the shapes there. That's the curved section there that I'm cutting freehand. And what I want to do is just match the curved part of the box because that is the most difficult edge for us to match up with. And so I'm just going to trim this until I have that curve down. And from there, I can trim this piece to match the inside of the box, because the other sides are fairly straight and fairly square. So we'll just trim this down now that we have that curve section matched. And we'll try it again. And it should fit pretty well this time. There we go. And this is the method that I use throughout this entire project is a sort of a try it. And if it doesn't fit, just trim a little more off. And in this case, it's always better to trim too little than too much. Uh, if something's too big, you just need to trim a little more off. If it's too small, well, there is no such thing as a wood stretcher, unfortunately. <laughs> and you might have to start over with a new piece if it's too severe. But uh, yeah, just go slowly and take your time. So we're going to glue it down now. I'm just using a popsicle stick to spread my glue around. With veneer, you want to get a nice even coverage on whatever you're gluing it to, to help prevent any warping or bubbles that might form. And we'll just tap this down into place here. You can see that the veneer split there as I was pushing it in. And that's not actually a big deal because we can just push it down into the glue and that'll hold that split back together and it'll be like it was never there in the first place. There we go. So now we just need to repeat this with the other sides of the inside of the box. <laughs> uh, something else important to do is to make sure that you weigh down your veneer after you uh, glue it on. Uh, ideally, you would have a nice big piece of wood to cover most of the veneer and then some weight to put on it. But if all else fails, a bunch of little weights will help as well. It doesn't have to be much, just enough to hold it down so it doesn't warp. And being a very thin veneer, it's not going to be very strong. So now we're attaching the other pieces on the other sides of the box. And we're just following the same method. I just cut out a piece, try it, trim off the excess, and try it again. Now here you can see this box has a rather unique feature. Uh, when it was made, it was made as a single box and then cut into two parts. And when it was cut, it slipped and has that jagged edge there. So I just took some wood filler and a little bit of sanding and we filled that right up and it looks good as new. So here I'm sanding the, the edge of the box and on my sanding block is actually long enough to touch both sides of the box at the same time. And that's to keep the edges nice and straight and square with the rest of the box itself. So now we're cutting some edges here. I wanna finish the edges of the box and I wanna leave that raw plywood surface there and I'm using some walnut and I thought it created a nice contrast with the cherry and we're just doing the same thing again we're just fitting a piece on 
kind of roughing out where I should cut. And we'll cut it and try it again. And if it looks right, we'll glue it down. If it doesn't, we'll trim a little bit more. And this is the great thing about this particular project and why I'm doing it this way. There's a number of different ways you can actually work with veneer to cover boxes, to make them decorative and so on. But this technique I'm using isn't any of those. But it's uh, not very practical. It's not very popular. And it's uh, if you were to ask a professional woodworker, they would say it's the wrong way. But it's a method that you can follow where you just keep working at it and eventually you'll have something you can be proud of where other techniques require skills or they require practice or they require <clears throat> a lot of concentration or specialized tools or uh, materials. Just doing it this way means you can take what you got and you can work with it until you get something you're happy with. It'll take you more time. It'll take you more effort, but ultimately uh, I th think it's easier if more time consuming. So here we're putting the veneer on the outside edge and I'm lining it up with the bottom so I don't have to sand that edge a little bit well as much as the other side. Um, I'll use the knife to cut off most of the excess wood that sticks over the edges and then I'll use a piece of sandpaper to bring that edge right up as close as I can to give, a, give me a nice finish. But if you line it up with one edge, you don't really have to do too much work for that edge. So now we're preparing the decoration for the front of the box. And this is a technique called marquetry. This is a very simple example here. And again, getting back to what I was saying, this is perhaps the worst way to do marquetry. But it's sort of like adult coloring books you can just keep going at it and it'll come together eventually for you so we just have a nice picture of what we want we attached it to the piece of wood and now we're just cutting out on the lines to get some pieces that we need and next we're going to cut the walnut lines to go inside the cherry and I need to get these as close to my picture as possible otherwise they're going to start pushing things out of the way and we can even try it here with my wooden pieces glued to my pitcher. And if it's too wide, we can just trim it a little more, cut another line a little thinner. And when we're finally happy with what we got, we just need to glue down our first piece of veneer, cherry veneer. And we'll measure both sides and make sure it's in the center. <laughs> and then we'll just attach one of the lines. And we're working from the inside out here to try to minimize any sort of uh, errors or inconsistencies and push them off the edge. That way we're still centered and we're still even when we're done. So we're trimming the miters here and I'm doing this right through both pieces of wood for the walnut lines just because then you have a perfect miter. You can take away that bit, take away that bit, and the two pieces have to fit together perfectly. Just like that. <laughs> it's a fun little trick. And it's also easy to see where it should be when you lay them on top of each other. And if everything goes well and everything's the right size, you should be able to just slide on the outer piece of wood. A little bit snug in my case. Maybe the line could have been a touch thinner. And glue it down and we're all set. So you can see the veneer for the walnut is quite a bit thinner than the veneer for the cherry but we'll deal with that a little bit later I'll show you what you can do about that then we just trim off all the excess with the exacto knife and then we'll go in with some sandpaper and bring it up to a nice crisp edge so now we're starting in on the top and its design and you can see it's quite a bit more complex than the front and that's actually uh, the, the fun of it, is coming up with a nice, fun design that looks nice to your own eye. And then trying to bring it into real life. And I'm doing this exactly the same way as I did the other pieces. Just cut out along the lines until you have your cherry pieces. And then we're going to cut strips to be our walnut lines. And nothing too special, it's just there's a lot more of them and it's a little more complex. So now we're going to glue down our pattern and we're working from the inside out again. And we'll just glue down our first piece and then start applying lines. 
And with this, these lines, I'm doing the miters just as they come along, laying the two pieces on top, cutting them, gluing them in together. And I'm trying to get as close as I can to my picture, but it doesn't always work out, as you'll see. And I'll tell you how I went about fixing that. And so we put our outer piece on that goes on next, and it doesn't fit, which is unfortunate. But it's not such a big deal. There's two ways you can deal with this. The way I dealt with this part is by actually trimming back the lines. So we trim a little bit off of the walnut lines. And if you keep doing that, eventually the cherry piece will fit on top. And you just keep checking. And make sure you've trimmed off enough. Make sure it's straight. And if not, trim off a little bit more until it does fit. You just keep going at it. And like I said, with marquetry, there are hundreds of techniques. It's been around for hundreds of years, and I'm sure some masters would absolutely roll in their grave seeing what I've done here. <laughs> and you can see there, it's even opened up a few edges and spots because I didn't trim things straight, but that's not a big deal. You just cut a sliver of walnut, glue it down in there, and it looks like you did it perfect the first time. <laughs> Yeah, but with this technique, you can just keep going at it uh, sort of uh, in a bullheaded way. Like I said, like a coloring book, you just keep going at it and eventually it'll come together for you. So here we're gluing on some little pieces and this might be a uh, useful hint is if your design has a lot of little pieces instead of big pieces like mine, it's actually a lot easier to fit together because you can trim the little pieces very easily without having to worry if this side fits or that side fits. If it's just a little rectangle or a square, it's very easy. And so with the bigger piece here that goes all the way around the outside, I used the other technique and I actually trimmed the piece going on instead of trimming the lines. That has the advantage of giving you lines that are all uniform instead of some being slightly thinner than others, which you may see or you may not see. But it also gives you trouble because you need to keep the piece in the right spot, in the right orientation. Make sure you, you're not trimming too much off and it's not getting lopsided. It can be tricky, but like I said, just a little bit at a time. So to deal with the different height veneers, the different thicknesses, I use what is called a cabinet scraper or a card scraper. And this can be a little hint for anyone who's doing apartment woodworking because unlike a sander, it doesn't blow this dust all, the, all around. It keeps it contained to one spot and actually works through the material pretty quick. So a little useful tool there if you're work, woodworking in an apartment. So for a finish, I'm just putting some olive oil on my box and you can use tongue oil or linseed oil or any of those things, urethane if you want. But really, natural oils work just as well. Uh, it won't last as long as those other finishes, but for a box that's only gonna get handled once in a while and not hold anything really that important, this is just good enough. You, know, you just apply it on heavy, wipe off the excess after it soaks in, and let it dry for about 24 hours. And it really brings out the luster in the wood and the color and the character. Yeah, it looks really nice. Look at the curl there in that uh, cherry. Yeah, that looks really, really gorgeous. So there's the box. I also added some hinges so that, uh, well, so it would hinge open. And you can see the dark cherry inside there, the lighter cherry on the outside. And as time goes by, that'll darken up. The walnut will lighten up. Eventually, it'll look kind of plain. And then maybe a 100 years later, it'll look uh, like a photo negative but uh, we'll see if it lasts that long <laughs> yeah so that was that's me uh, taking a dollar store box and trying to make it look beautiful and i think it came out pretty nice so if you enjoyed this i hope you subscribe and hit the bell icon and as always i want to say thank you for watching Bye bye